cryptocurrency. The nonpartisan Cook Political Report with Amy Walter rated the race solid Democrat. I'm John Keller, political analyst for WBZ, welcoming our online viewers on WBZ.com and BostonGlobe.com and our listeners on WBZ News Radio 1030. Joining in on the questioning tonight is Victoria McGrain, political editor of The Globe. Welcome, Vicky. Good to have you here. And now, here are the candidates on your ballot for U.S. Senate in alphabetical order. They are Republican nominee John Deaton, an attorney and Marine Corps veteran, and the Democratic nominee, Elizabeth Warren, a former law professor completing her second term as U.S. Senator from Massachusetts. A very quick word about the format familiar to those of you who've seen WBC debates over the years. We get right to the questions, some of which have been submitted by voters. Each candidate gets one minute to respond, then we open it up to a free-flowing rebuttal period where the candidates can question one another and bring up other relevant topics. As always, there are only two hard and fast rules. No filibustering and obey your moderator. Are we, are we cool with that? Absolutely. Excellent. Good to hear. Thank you. Let's begin our debate. First question goes first to Mr. Deaton from Victoria McGrain. Earlier this year, a border bill with bipartisan support in the Senate died at the urging of former President Donald Trump and other GOP leaders. It would have spent billions on border security, overhauled our asylum system, and helped Massachusetts deal with the migrant surge that's happening here. Only four Republican senators voted for it. Senator Warren voted against it. You have said that you would have supported this bill. Why? Listen, this is the one issue that separates me and Senator Warren more than anything. I know the southern border. I went in the Marine Corps stationed in Yuma, Arizona as the top prosecutor. I was fighting the drug cartels from drug smuggling and human trafficking. And I actually received an award by President then President Bill Clinton for my efforts. And I went to the border when they took the rec center from the poor kids in Roxbury. And let me tell you, I'll tell you what Senator Warren won't tell you. Twelve million is the number that have crossed 100 people on the terrorist watch list the migrants they don't run they wait they have no id and they're given court date of 2032 and 2033 eight or nine years from now four to five hundred people suspected to be terrorists have gotten through it's a national security crisis when you learn what the migrants are going through it's a humanitarian crisis and senator warren is extreme on this she supports open borders she voted no on that border bill it would have brought relief it wasn't perfect you don't let perfect get in the way of good and she's so extreme she objects to president biden's cap of 2500 a day that's how extreme thank you senator warren so the border uh, the migrant situation is causing stress and it's causing stress here in massachusetts on our health care system on our education system uh on um housing uh it's also causing stress on the families themselves understand this though the republican playbook is one that donald trump has perfected and that is get up and demonize as many republicans as you as many immigrants as you can Call them terrible names, say that they're trying to eat our dogs and cats. But then, most importantly, don't fix the problem because it works as an election issue, not something to be fixed, but an election issue. That's what happened in 2016, in 2018, in 2020, in 2022, and in 2024. And John Deaton certainly doesn't refer to immigrants eating our dogs and cats but he's taking a page out of the same playbook. We need comprehensive immigration reform, but the only way we're going to do that is by cutting off extremist Republicans and actually coming together and fixing it. We're gonna to get to the open period in one second. Vicki has a follow-up. I wanted to ask, yes, a follow-up, because um, former President Trump, his promise on this issue is to execute the largest mass deportation in American history. Is that something you would support? Of course not when you talk about mass deportations, 20, 30 million, no. But small level deportation has to be part of it. Listen, President Obama deported 3 million. It's okay to have it. But listen, let's go back. No one in this race running for office can identify with these poor migrants more than me. I know what it's like to want a better life. I listen to my mom cry at night on the nights that we didn't have food to eat. So of course I don't demonize these migrants, but it is 
12 million. I assume 99% of these people are good people who want a better life. 1% is 120,000 potential bad guys. And we just saw a, a report that says 435,000 have felony convictions, 15,000 rapists, 13,000 murders. So even if you give the benefit of the doubt like I do, it's still a national security risk. Equal time. Look, this is a page out of the Donald Trump playbook. It may have a little nicer face on it, but it's the same kind of notion. It's an election issue. Let's demonize that other group. Let's talk about how they're rapists and criminals. And let's figure out a way to make that the only issue in the debate. Because Republicans believe that they will win on that issue. And they've done it over and over and over. I first voted for comprehensive immigration reform in 2013. It was a bill led by Republican Marco Rubio, and it had all of the elements we need in immigration reform. It had border security, it had work permits, it had money for our states, and it had a pathway to citizenship. I believe strongly that as we negotiate a comprehensive immigration reform plan, we need to make certain that the states are fully reimbursed for what they are spending on migrants, because after all, questions yep. questions about immigration are federal. We're, the federal government should pay for the migrants who are here to support them. But we need a comprehensive plan, and the Democrats and the Republicans need to work together. Rebuttal. And we need to separate yeah, out this this crazy extremism. Pay extremism, absolutely. Pay attention to what. Not what they say, what they do. Senator Warren just literally said, we need comprehensive re immigration reform bill. It was on the table. And she, bipartisan, and she rejected. She's out there saying Vice President Harris is going to bring back that bill. She's literally saying that nationally, and she voted against it. How do you vote? Uh, how do you object to 2,500 cap per day? I know these. I went to the border. I went to the border and I learned that these women are being given plan B pills because they get raped along the way. I will never demonize these people, but it's a national security crisis. The problem is Senator Warren will say, oh, you call it national security crisis and you're a racist. That's insane. Response, please. No, let's be clear. This is the Republican playbook and it's the same playbook over and over and over. And that is talk about the immigration problem, but when it actually comes time to fix it, like we did back in 2013, the extremist Republicans, Donald Trump said just a few months ago, I want to keep it as an election issue, so don't actually fix the problem. In fact, see what you can do to make the problem worse, make everybody suffer so they can run on it again and again and again. We do need comprehensive immigration reform. I've laid out what the four elements are. That's what we need to negotiate for. There's only one extremist on this stage tonight, and it's Elizabeth Warren. I'm the moderate, centrist, common sense candidate. It is bankrupting this state. You know, they spend so many billions on the migrants but can't save Neshoba or Dorchester's Kearney Hospital. And Senator Warren does not want immigration reform. She had a chance, and she rejected it. One more time, Look, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on. I first voted for immigration reform back in 2013, right. but remember, I did not buy a ticket on a boat that Donald Trump had already sunk. By the time we voted on this one, we all knew the bill was dead, the Republican support had been pulled. The big question is, what position do you want to be in as we're negotiating for real immigration reform? And for me... We need a pathway to citizenship, okay. and we also need full reimbursement for the states that are currently housing the migrants. All right, candidates, you can return to this later if you want to, but I do want to move on so we get different topics in here. And you'll go first here, Senator. Question for both of you. Politicians like to talk a big game about bipartisanship. But the record shows senators vote with their party leaders the vast majority of the time. And it's hard to see how harsh political rhetoric promotes voter support for bipartisan behavior. So how can voters trust that you'll put their interests ahead of partisan politics? One minute, please. I'll stand on my record on that because I have done it. Look, I am so deeply honored that the people of Massachusetts have sent me to Washington to fight for them. 
And so that's what I do every day. And that's how it is that over the 12 years I've been there, I have been the principal sponsor in 44 pieces of legislation and 27 of those pieces of legislation are bipartisan. That is, I have a Republican co-sponsor who helped me get to the finish line. That's how it is that I broke the hearing aid monopoly with help from Republican Charles Grassley. That's how it is that I protected pensions with help from Republican Steve Daines. That's how it is just recently that I helped make sure you get your money back when they cancel your flight with help from Republican Josh Hawley. And those 44 bills do not include the more than 100 pieces that I've gotten into our defense authorization bills that come through every year, many of those on a bipartisan basis. I deliver on a bipartisan basis. Thank you, Mr. Deaton. Senator one Warren bill. has passed one bill in 12 years as primary sponsor. But let me tell you, remember what I said that you have to pay attention to what they do, not what they say? Senator Warren has been out there. When is a Republican going to stand up to Donald Trump? When is a Republican going to defend and protect a woman's right to choose her own health issues and be pro-abortion? Guess what? That Republican is here. I've been taking on the own the leadership of the Republican Party. And what does Senator Warren do? Did she welcome that? No, she lied about me. She called me a MAGA extremist Republican recruited by the Trump machine when she knew that I was even more critical of President Trump than she has been. Pay attention to what they say. Bipartisan and Elizabeth Warren do not go together. She is one of the most extremist people in the Senate, and we could go over how she wants to pack the Supreme Court, how she's so anti-business she caught. She's partly the responsible for Neshoba and Carney Hospital. She prevented Amazon by an iRobot. Why? Because Amazon's a big, bad company, and okay. hundreds of jobs were lost. She's the extremist. I'm the moderate. Thank you. Rebuttal. So this is why people don't trust John Deaton. He said, started this, this uh, discussion by saying that I had only passed one bill. He has been fact-checked on that publicly in the Boston Globe and said, that's not true. I have passed 27 bills on a bipartisan basis, and that doesn't even count the changes I've gotten into our military bills that pass every single year, many of which are on a bipartisan basis. Look, there's a lot we can do on a bipartisan basis. I'll mention just one thing, and that is helping our veterans who have traumatic brain injury. I've been working on this for years now. The notion that when you're hit by blast overpressure, we thought originally with IEDs, but it may also be when you're throwing grenades or even holding ammunition near your head that it can cause changes to our military members' brains. I have been working to develop the studies on this, the research on this, the diagnosis on this, and the treatment. And I want to say, a big part of that's happening right here in Massachusetts at home base. It's something I do on a bipartisan basis with Republican Joni okay. Ernst from Iowa because I'm in Washington to deliver for the people of Massachusetts. Equal. And I'll do that on a bipartisan basis. Equal time. Thank you. Notice I said as primary sponsor, but listen, you notice that Senator Warren didn't even address the fact that she lied about who I am, and she just ignored that. You know, my daughters asked me not to run. They said, Daddy, don't run because politics is ugly. And they might lie about you and try to make you look like a bad guy when you're not. You want to know what I said? I said, Senator Warren is a 75-year-old grandmother. When she sees that I believe strongly in a woman's right to reproduction, and when she sees that I take on Donald Trump or anyone else in the Republican Party, she'll welcome that. And we can have a real policy debate. And the first thing she did was lie about my daughter, Olivia, Senator, call me in tears, saying, Daddy, I told you, my friends are texting me. They're emailing me. I thought your dad wasn't MAGA. I thought your dad believed in a woman's rights. Senator Warren doesn't owe me a damn thing, but she owes my daughters an apology. You should not lie like that. Further, go ahead. So let's be clear. John Deaton moves to Massachusetts, signs up as a Republican, uh, signs on with the Republican Party to run a coordinated campaign, brags in a Republican 
uh, a primary debate about how he's raising money for Republican control of the Senate and gets Republicans to come here to raise money for it. And he's unhappy when he gets called a Republican. Look, this is about Senate control. And that's going to be about abortion. If the Republicans have control of the United States Senate, there will be zero opportunity to vote on a law to make Roe versus Wade law of the land. But it's also that our education policy will be controlled by people who don't believe in public education. Our climate policy will be controlled by people who are climate deniers. Our judges will be carefully screened by people who will make sure that they are anti-abortion. And our gun policies will be set by people who think thoughts and prayers are all that we need. Republican control of the United States Senate is bad for Massachusetts, and it's bad for our... Go ahead, equal country. time. Yes, listen, you notice she still avoids the issue, and, and, and she just misled the voters again, because I said that I had a victory fund. I was trying to get state legislature people elected because the one-party system's not working in Massachusetts. Again, Senator Warren misled. But here's the thing. Senator Warren lives in this hyper-partisan political world where she's defined by party. You notice it's Democrats are great, Republicans are bad. I got news for you, Senator, all of you suck in Congress, all of you. It's a broken system. I'm disrupting that system. Senator Warren worries about control. When she was asked, what's wrong with John Deaton's policies? You know what she said? Oh, the crypto people like him. Then the person said, well, wait a minute, is that it? And she goes, oh, we want to not lose control of the Senate. This is the point. Is she worried more about the the uh, Neshoba uh, customers and, and, and nurses and doctors okay. and the Carney nurses and doctors and patients and the Amazon employees uh, that were going to buy iRobot? Is she worried about them the way she worries about control that Massachusetts would be far better? Okay, I, I don't want to interrupt the flow here, but you raised an important issue, abortion rights, and Victoria McGrain had a question on that. Senator Warren, Mr. Deaton here says he is a pro-choice Republican who supports codifying Roe v. Wade into federal law, and that's, as you say, your position as well. So what is the difference between you on the issue? So this is a matter of trust. You know, we all watched as one after another Republican nominee uh, for the Supreme Court walked in front of the United States Senate and swore until the world looked level that they would respect precedent, which was supposed to be code for they would not overturn Roe versus Wade. And then, literally, the first opportunity they got, they set Roe versus Wade on fire and burned it to ash. And now what happens is that John Deaton comes in front of us and swears until the world looks level that he is a pro-choice candidate. But here's the deal. It's the same John Deaton who said, gee, if he had, had a chance, he would have voted for Neil Gorsuch, one of the justices who set Roe versus Wade on fire and burned it to the ground. He also went on that Republican stage and bragged about he is the candidate helping raise money for Republican control of the Senate. Look, when we talk about abortion, we are potentially talking about the lives of our daughters and our granddaughters. And when that's on the line, we cannot trust John Deaton. Equal time, Mr. Yeah, Deaton. let me tell you something. Don't talk to me about I'm a father of three daughters. I'm incapable of supporting a law that would restrict the freedoms and privacy of my own daughters. Now, let me tell you, remember, I keep saying pay attention to what they do. Senator Warren was in the Senate on June 22nd when that Dobbs decision came down. They had the presidency, the House, the Senate. Where was the Roe bill? You want to know what John Deaton would have done? John Deaton, as a Republican, would have said, I demand that we vote on this and put every U.S. senator on notice. Where do they stand? Senator Warren, they don't want to do that. Why? Because it might make a Democrat in West Virginia uncomfortable. It might make a Democrat in another state. She's guilty of exactly what she said Donald Trump's guilty of. They didn't want to settle the abortion issue. They wanted it divisive. They wanted it as an election issue. Otherwise, Senator Warren would have wrote the road bill and got on the Senate floor and demanded it that it be voted on. She didn't then. She won't next time. Rebuttal. 
So I appreciate that Mr. Deaton has three daughters. The justices that set Roe versus Wade on fire and burned it to the ground collectively had 10 daughters. And Donald Trump has two daughters that we know of. Look, this is truly a question of trust. Keep in mind that right now, 30% of all women live in a state that effectively bans access to abortion. And if Donald Trump and J.D. Vance make it to the White House, it won't be 30%, it will be 100%. They're coming for us everywhere, including in states like Massachusetts. If they get the opportunity, and if there's Republican control of the Senate, you better believe that they are going to try to ban abortion everywhere. They've told us that. They've told us that in Project 2025. J.D. Vance has written a letter to the Department of Justice showing them how to do it without a vote in the Senate. Donald Trump brags about okay. what he's done. House and Senate Republicans say they are going for a nationwide abortion ban. Believe them when they tell I'm us. I'm going to give you another bite at this, then we have to break. Well, Go ahead. Of course. Well, listen, it's not just Neil Gorsuch's fingerprints that's on the Dobbs decision. It's Senator Warren's. Let's go back to 2013 when she encouraged Harry Reid to drop the filibuster rule on lower judges. They were warned by Mitch McConnell that if you do that, then we're going to go with the Supreme Court. If that filibuster would have been honored like it was for 100 years and Senator Warren wouldn't have pushed to end it, the Supreme Court would look different today. It would look very different today. And I know it hurts her to, for me to say the truth, but her fingerprints are on that Dobbs decision as well. Briefly, and then I'll give you another So let's point. just be clear. Actually, we did have a vote in the United States Senate to try to restore Roe versus Wade, and it was blocked by a filibuster led by the Republicans. So yes, we do have a problem with the filibuster. We need to get rid of the filibuster, and I think we're going to have enough Democrats in the United States Senate to do that. The only way we will be able to vote on Roe versus Wade as nationwide law of the land is to have a Democrat in the White House, a Democratic majority in the Senate, and a Democrat majority in the House. That is the only way. And because she went first on this a brief final word for you, then the break, please. Well, sure, very brief. Listen, Senator Warren's out there telling people, hey, we're going to end the filibuster and then enact Roe immediately. Senator, you got 51 votes now. Let's do it now. You have the presidency and the vice president running for president. Do it now. John Deaton would do it okay. now because John Deaton's not loyal to a party or a person or agenda. He'll be loyal, loyal to you out there, to Massachusetts and to the country that he's already served for seven years of active duty. Okay. Not to a party or an agenda. Thank you both. Our debate between the two candidates for U.S. Senate will continue in a moment here on WBZ. So please stay with us. Welcome back to the WBZ Boston Globe U.S. Senate debate. John Keller alongside Victoria McGrain of the Globe. Uh, uh, Mr. Deaton, you'll, you'll go first on this one. You two take a very different view of the cryptocurrency industry. Senator Warren says she wants to build a, quote, anti-crypto army to rein in what she calls crypto's threat to financial stability, consumer protection, climate, and national security. You have criticized her and federal authorities for what you claim is overly aggressive regulation of crypto. What's the right balance? One minute. Well, listen, I want everyone to know, when I found Bitcoin, I thought of my mom because my mom was on welfare and food stamps and she couldn't keep a bank account because she couldn't keep the minimum balance and the bank would hit her with the predatory fees and we needed that money. And then she had to go to the check cashing stores that you see in the hood and they would charge her a fee. My mom would beg them, please, can you take less so that we have the money for food? And then when I went to college and I would send her money from college, I used Western Union and Western Union would take... 15% and made a difference. So when Bitcoin came, I was like, great, you can cut out the predatory banks and the middlemen and the money grams of Western unions, and you could help unbanked people like my mom. But the better question here is for Senator Warren, with illegal immigration bankrupting this state, with inflation pricing regular people out of economy, with a debt crisis where 40% of the people don't have 500 bucks in case of emergency, with foreign wars taking place, why did this senator wake up one day and say, with all that, I'm going to build an anti-crypto army because crypto is so important to her? That's a question that she needs to answer 
Thank you. Senator, one minute. So look, I'm fine. People want to buy and sell crypto. That's great. I just want to make sure that crypto has to follow the same rules as every bank, every stockbroker, every credit union, and that is some consumer protection laws and some laws to make sure that it's not open for terrorists and drug traffickers and human traffickers in Iran. So that's what I want. But I want to be really clear about what's really at issue here. And that is, who are you going to represent in Washington? There's one candidate standing here who gets 90% of the funding to keep their campaign going from one industry, the crypto industry. One candidate who has said quite openly that his personal worth is 80% tied up in crypto. Look, people of Massachusetts know me. You know I fight for everybody, fight for working people. If John Deaton has a chance to go to Washington, his crypto buddies are going to want a return on their investment. He's going to be there to fight for crypto. Well, Senator Warren never lets the truth get in the way. If you actually look what I did, I've upset more crypto billionaires because I did her job. She sits on the banking committee. I exposed all this regulatory capture by a uh, former SEC chair, by the way, appointed by Donald Trump, and Bill Hinman, appointed by Donald Trump's administration. There was an IG report. I'm responsible for a lot of that, of these conflicts. So I've upset more of the crypto billionaires than anyone did. The largest crypto fund block me on social media but here's the thing her ban her bill bans bitcoin self-custody in america yet she's allowing the banks to custody bitcoin another example that senator warren's policies do not help poor people they do not help the working class she favors the accredited investor rule that excludes 85 percent of the american population she her policies absolutely hurt poor people and i got in this race to give poor people an actual voice rebuttal so i'm just trying to understand what mr d is saying here he's saying he has really made crypto folks mad so mad that they came here in massachusetts and are funding 90 percent of his campaign to try to take back this senate seat to take it away from me i'm having a hard time putting those pieces together but i will say this look the banks have truly failed a lot of poor people. It's part of the reason I fought so hard to get a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau in place. It has now saved American consumers more than $15 billion that companies that cheated them had to return directly to those consumers. So I'm all in favor of more restrictions on the bank. The latest one for me has been to go after them on overdraft fees, where folks like JP Morgan Chase were making more than a billion dollars a year off people who were struggling making it day to day. I'm in those fights, but I think crypto ought to have to follow the same rules as everybody else. Briefly, I wish like Senator Warren would attack inflation the way she attacks crypto. I wish she would attack securing the border the way she's focused on crypto. You know, she's so focused on crypto, she had the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase available for questioning, and they had financed the largest child sex trafficking operation in history with Jeffrey Epstein. And you know, Senator Warren didn't ask a single question. She wanted to talk about crypto because she's so hyper-focused. Now, I know that because I was raped as a child for a period of two years, I might be a little more sensitive to those child rape victims, but I want to ask Senator Warren, why would you not ask one question? J.P. Morgan Chase settled for $290 million to these rape victims. They had to settle with the U.S. Virgin Islands. And Senator Warren doesn't ask a question. You want to know why? Because a former Democrat president's involved, because her donors are involved, because people that she knows are involved. Again, loyalty to an agenda, loyalty to a party. I come back, I come in, and I want transparency on everything. I'd like her to answer the question on behalf of all those rape victims, though. So, look, I have stayed after the banks. I have stayed after the regulators that regulate the banks. I have done everything I humanly can to try to get more fairness into our financial system. What I don't hear Mr. Deaton talking about is what is the return on investment that his crypto investors are expecting from having put millions of dollars into his race? Look. I'm all for having a crypto system. If people want to buy and sell crypto, all I want are just some basic fair rules 
the same kind of fair rules that should apply to all of our financial institutions. I do want to move on, but she I'm asked sure. a question of you, so Absolutely. go ahead. Listen, I can't, I can't help, I can't help it. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. Uh, I can't help it when she goes to ban an entire industry that they're motivated against her because they see a viable candidate. But listen, the rules are already there. Senator Warren, you notice she didn't answer the question about those rape victims. You know, you can't call yourself a, a absolute warrior for women if you only select the women you're willing to protect. You know, I, I really don't understand this charge, and I don't know what you're talking about here. I have pushed on the banks and tried to get more regulation over the banks and tried to hold the banks accountable every single time they step out of line. Now, I get it. They're big and they're powerful. Of course, I don't take my money from the banking industry. I take my money from the people who want to support this campaign. What I don't hear you talking about is what exactly do the crypto folks expect to get by funding 90% You want to know something, uh, everyone out there? I sued the government because the SEC had done something really bad to small retail investors, and a lifelong Democratic judge agreed with me. I did it all pro bono, and this token XRP was called legal because of my work. I won Lawyer of the Year, Consumer Advocate of the Year, Defender of Freedom Award because I did it for free. And guess what? Last week, that crypto billionaire that she's talking about that has supported me just donated millions of this XRP token to Vice President Harris' campaign. If I didn't do what I did, sue the SEC on behalf of small retail investors, that donation to your candidate of choice, Senator, would not have happened. So, Madam Vice President, if you're watching, you're welcome. I would like to move on. You can return to this if you like later. Uh, Victoria Legrain has our next question. We'll go to you first again, Mr. Deaton, sure. to make up for the for so, before. Turning our attention to uh, the rest of the world, you've suggested that Senator Warren is somehow insufficiently supportive of Israel. You've criticized her for not attending Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's speech to Congress. Would you, if elected as our senator, be guaranteed be a guaranteed vote in support of all Israeli government policies, or can you cite any policy the Israeli government has pursued, past or future, where you might draw the line? Well, listen, I would never say I'm going to support all of anything. I'm going to, my vote in the Senate will have to be earned, but we have to start with October 7th was the worst act of war and genocide against the Jews since the Holocaust. We have to start with that. And Senator Warren's been silent on this. Last time she ran for re-election, she said, quote, she had deep sympathy for Jews. We've learned that that sympathy doesn't run so deep. She was silent when the Harvard president disgracefully wouldn't admit that calling for the death of every Jew and the destruction of Israel amounted to misconduct on Harvard's campus. She boycotted Prime Minister Netanyahu's address. You and I don't get to pick which day we go to work now, do we? She did. And worse than that, she has taken a pro-Hamas position. She was actually going to speak at a pro-Hamas event recently, and word got out, and she bailed out. But here's the thing. Sarah Warren has been more critical of our ally, Israel, than she has Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. It's her policies in Iran that got us in this situation. She favored the $6 billion to Iran. They bought missiles with that $6 billion. They shot the missiles at our ally, and now America is shooting down the missiles that America helped Duran get. If that's not the failure of foreign policy, I don't know what is. Senator Warren, one minute. I am very concerned that war in the Middle East is continuing to spread. Israel has a right to defend itself. Prime Minister Netanyahu does not have a right to drag the United States into war in the Middle East. I think it's pretty clear what we need. We need to de-escalate in this area. We need to stop the bombing. We need to get those hostages home. I have met with hostage families over and over. We need to get more humanitarian relief in for those who are suffering. And most of all, we need to push the parties, all of the parties, to the negotiating table to work out a lasting peace. And that means a two-state solution where parties, two different peoples, can live side by side with respect, with self-determination and insecurity.
Rebuttal. I wish Senator Warren would have spent as much time trying to ban that $6 billion investment into Iran that she did blocking Amazon and iRobot. I wish she would have spent that effort trying to ban the money going to Iran to buy missiles against our allies than she would have objecting to Stewart Health being bought by United Healthcare, and we lost two hospitals. I wish that she would ban the relationship with Iran that the administration has the way she wants to ban Bitcoin in the United States. It's insane. It is a failed policy that sits at her doorstep. Go ahead if you want it. Look, I've, I've met with Prime Minister Netanyahu one on one years ago when I went over to Israel. And at that time, we talked about Gaza and about the growing problems in Gaza. We know what we need to do. We don't need rhetoric like this. What we need to do is we need to stop the bombing. We need to get those hostages home. We need to put more money into humanitarian relief, and we need to push the parties to the negotiating table. This war is expanding, and this kind of reckless talk is not going to make anyone any safer. Go ahead, Brie. Governor Walls in the vice president debate literally said that Iran is closer to a nuclear weapon than any time before. And it's because of Senator Warren's policies that they've done that. Listen, if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, we know they're going to use it. So it's because of Senator Warren's policies that we're actually in this mess. I, I do hope that Mr. Deaton understands that it was Donald Trump that took us out of the deal we had with Iran to keep Iran from developing a nuclear weapon. The reason that Governor Walls talked about this is because it was a failure of the Trump administration. Look, as I said, we know what needs to be done. It, it, rhetoric like this is not helping. Six billion dollars went to Iran okay. during this current administration. They paid for missiles to shoot okay. at our ally, and now we are shooting those missiles down that she helped Iran get. That is right. insanity. Let's move on. You, again, you can return to this if you like. And uh, this question comes from a voter, Hunter from Swampskin. He writes, I've been born and raised in Massachusetts and want to settle down in the Bay State following the completion of my education. However, I find the cost of housing to be the single greatest obstacle to my being able to do so. You'll, you'll go first year, Senator. What will you do in the Senate to help Hunter? Hunter, I have a plan for you, and I actually also have a way to pay for it. Look. Our problem is Econ 101. We don't have enough housing supply. Our population has gone up, and the number of available houses has not. And that has shut too many people out of the housing market and driven up costs through the roof. So I have a plan to help build 3 million new housing units all across the country, tens of thousands right here in Massachusetts. It's already endorsed by more than 30 mayors across Massachusetts. And it's fully paid for. Look, we're going to have a decision to make as a nation. Do we want to continue to let billionaires pass along wealth to their generation after generation? Or could we increase our taxes just a little bit on them back to, say, the George W. Bush era and use that money to invest in building more housing? That's how we'll get prices down. That's how first-time home buyers will be able to get into the market. Thank you, Mr. Deaton. One minute. Listen, I looked at Senator Warren's bill. It averages a house here in Massachusetts to be built for $183,000. She's never here, so she doesn't realize that it, at minimum costs $300 a square foot. So a house here in Massachusetts in the greater Boston area costs $600,000 to build. It's easy to throw a plan that's never going to happen and then try to take credit. Here's what you have to do. First, got to secure the border because the housing situation is being exasperated here in Massachusetts with her open door policy. It is an absolute supply problem and so i've talked to builders and you know what the builders tell me it takes two years to get the necessary permits just to build then they get more delays we have to incentivize the behavior that we want so you give tax credits for low income housing so that poor people have an opportunity to have better housing you do that you also for the renters out there we need to increase the four thousand tax uh, credit to 8,000 to cause some relief for them. 
Go ahead. Okay, Re rebuttal. So I'm sorry. Start out by blaming the immigrants, but let's be clear about I blame you, not the immigrants. Let's be clear about my housing bill. My housing bill, you say, oh, it can't get done. You know, that's what people said about my 15% minimum tax on corporations. Nobody will ever get that done. And yet, that's exactly what got passed two years ago as a way to pay for the biggest climate package in the history of the world, along with $35 insulin and a $2,000 cap on what seniors spend. So I believe in having big plans that work. Here's the good news, too. The vice president is in favor of doing exactly the same thing, and that is building out housing supply. But the way I do this, there's no number in there on what we say you have to spend in Massachusetts. It's that I enlist partnership with the mayors for them to bring down costs. And they have a lot of different ways they can do that. But our job as the federal government is to say, if you do that, we will put real federal dollars behind that to help you pay for the elementary school or for the, the new sewage plant you need to work in partnership to get more housing. It's e a great plan. Equal time. This, you incentivize the builders to build. You make it worth their while, and that's how you solve this, and the private sector can do it. Also, we have a commercial real estate issue. I favor that we... do away with some of these zoning issues and turn some of the commercial real estate that's not being used into housing. You know, you notice Senator Warren always, if you say there's a national security crisis when hundreds of thousands of people that are literally cross the border with criminal convictions, if, she, if you say that, she'll call you a racist or a xenophobe. That's ridiculous. We got to end this divisiveness. You know, let me tell you, I've been on the campaign trail and The people on the far left say, oh, if you say there's a national security crisis, you're a racist xenophobe. And then if I don't demonize the migrants and I say, listen, these are good people who just want a better life. I know what that's like. Then you're soft on immigration. It's in Senator Warren. It's part of that broken system. We have to okay. get people like me who are not loyal to a party or an agenda or a person. That is what will give Massachusetts a real voice in the United States Senate, a voice okay. they haven't so had for years. Go ahead. So I just want to go really quickly back to Hunter's original question, and that is how we're going to bring down the cost of housing. Look, the private sector can do it. That's what Mr. Deaton says. That's what they've been saying for decades now, and the price goes up and up and up. It is time to take the resources of the federal government to work with our local communities and to say we are going to incentivize bringing down prices, and part of that can be cutting regulations. You bet. But let the localities decide for themselves which regulations to cut and how they will bring down costs. Uh, we need partnership here. We, we have to break, but I'm giving you the last well, word. Well, leave it to these career break, politicians that have been in office for years. Just like the wealth gap that Senator Warren talks about, it's increased every single year that she's been in office because she doesn't have a clue of how to save it. And I hope we get to talk about it because this is an issue that I'm passionate about. It's not a political slogan for me, Senator. It lives in my heart. Thank you both. Great debate so far. Coming up next, our next question from Victoria McGrain. When the WBZ Boston Globe U.S. Senate debate continues. Stay with us. Welcome back to the WBZ TV Boston Globe U.S. Senate debate. Boston Globe political editor Victoria McGrain has our next question. Let's keep things local. This fall, Massachusetts voters will decide whether or not to keep a passing score on the NCAS test, a major diagnostic tool created by the 1993 Education Reform Act, as the state's main high school graduation requirement. If question two passes, it would leave the state's 300-plus school districts to set their own graduation standards. Mr. Deaton, to you, are you voting for it or against it, and why? Listen, I'm voting no because... The public education system of which I was with in the inner cities are already stressed out, and we can't have 351 standards. Our school system is still recovering from COVID. The statistics of fifth graders can't even read, and there's people being graduated. If you don't have the MCAS and you have no standards, you're going to get people graduating from high school that can't fully speak English now in the state, and that puts them at a disadvantage. We have to be fair to the students. Students being here, and let me tell you something, something that's very important to me. I grew up in the inner city. I want to make sure that a kid in Springfield, in Roxbury, in 
Mattapan, in Brockton, that they have the same quality education as the kid in Wesley or the kid in Cambridge. And it's something that we have to pay attention to. And so what I want to do is give tax credits to teachers who go into the inner cities to teach. I want to Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you finish your sentence. I'm just. No, I was just that. saying the bottom line is we can't abandon these kids in the inner cities. And what will happen is that that's what's going to happen. You're going to get a better education in the more affluent communities. And trust me, we do not want to leave these kids. They already have it as bad as it can be. I got in this race yeah. because I wanted to show them there is a chance for you in this country. There is a chance to achieve the American dream like I did. And I want to make sure that we can't cut them from education and then ask them to achieve their dream. Thank you. Senator Warren, MCAS, question two. So I will be voting yes on question two. Many of you know I started out as a special ed teacher. And I learned early on that one test is not a great measure for every kid. That ultimately we keep about 700 kids from getting a college, a high school diploma. And it's a lot of special needs kids and a lot of kids who are just learning English. Look, Massachusetts has the number one education system in the country. And you have to ask yourself why. Some people think, well, it's because we instituted this test. I think it's because of our teachers. It's because we have really terrific teachers and we support them. Our teachers are telling us that the consequence of this test is actually to teach our kids less because we're teaching them more about test taking skills, taking them out of the classroom. They want an opportunity to help shape a broader view of which children get a high school diploma. And I think that's something that we should support our teachers who have helped us build the number one education system in the country. Rebel. I may not be able to fit in Washington because this logic that these career politicians use just escapes me. Senator Warren just said, we in Massachusetts have the best educational system in the country. So I come from the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid of the Marine Corps. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so here you go, Senator Warren, bragging. We got the best system, but let's change it. Makes no sense. Just like everything in Washington just about makes no sense. I want to bring common sense back to the United States Senate because clearly it's lacking. Equal time. You know, I just have to say, I believe it's our teachers who are producing this system. They're the ones on the ground with our kids, and they're the ones who are telling us just how miserable this test is making life for many of our kids and for many of our teachers. And for what? To identify 700 out of 72,000 kids to say you didn't pass that particular form of test? I got to say, as a former special needs teacher, I think that's a terrible approach. One standard is better than 351 standards. That's the bottom line. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, let's see if we can fit in one more question here, and this will sort of tax your ingenuity, I think. Uh, it's another voter question from Kerry in Brookfield. Quote, it's very difficult to find a primary care doctor. Wait lists are up to a year. There's a definite lack of medical care, especially in rural communities. Do you have a plan to address this issue? And I forgot who we started with last time. I started last time. All right, go ahead, Senator. Okay, good. Well, the answer is it's going to take a lot of pieces here. And one of them is that we need to make sure that we preserve at least access to health care. Keep in mind that Republican control of the Senate means that the people who are in charge nationally of our health care policy want to repeal the Affordable Care Act. And that would cost Massachusetts literally billions of dollars. But our system is already broken, and part of the problem is private equity. Private equity is an issue that I've been working on for years now, trying to beat these guys out of one industry after another, where they come in, like with department stores, remember uh, Kmart, remember Sears, uh, remember Toys R Us, suck the value out of these businesses, send it to a handful of investors, and leave a collapsing shell behind. They're now doing it in our healthcare system. That's what Steward Health was all about. And that's what I'm leading the fight to make sure never happens again in Massachusetts. Mr. Deaton, a couple of things. Senator Warren, um, literally, there was a 
a deal on the table for United Health to purchase Stewart. Senator Warren rushed to the table. She objected to it. Why? Because it's a for-profit company and she wants to be consistent with her brand. She thinks fighting against things means fighting for them. And they're not the same thing. And now we lost two hospitals that could have been saved. We're talking about there's a pregnant woman now in Central Mass that has to drive 45 minutes to give delivery because they've lost the maternity health care because Senator Warren want to rush and say, look, big bag company, we want to not allow this deal to go through. And it didn't. And so that's the approach that she takes to everything. And she voted for the Ukraine war, which I'm, unfortunately we didn't get to tonight. But you want to know the $200 billion that we could have done, Senator Warren? We could offer universal pre-K for 10 years, have $50 billion more. We could expand it Medicaid in the 12 states that didn't adopt it yet for 20 years and give millions of more people health insurance. And Senator Warren doesn't ask and for these questions to be when she votes for, like, foreign wars, she doesn't ask the appropriate and, questions. And Rebuttal, you each have a minute left. Go. So let's be clear. John Deaton seems to think the answer to our health care system is let the largest insurance company in the world come in and buy up more of our hospitals. I don't think that's the answer. I think that's the problem. The corporatization of our health care system is literally killing us and we need federal regulations in place to stop that that's what i'm fighting for that's what john deaton wants to advance that's why control of the senate matters so much in this election rebuttal carney hospital in dorchester neshoba hospital in central mass you know what they needed they needed a senator that fights for people that fights for the nurses that fights for the lab techs that fights for the doctors that fights for the patients. Senator Warren didn't care about that. She just rushed to say, big bad company. So I object, just like with Amazon iRobot. The people in iRobot needed a senator to say, you know, maybe this one deal makes sense, but no, it's big bad Amazon, must be evil. Therefore, Senator Warren objects, cost hundreds of people's jobs. That's the difference. She fights against things and people, not for. Fighting against the rich and the wealthy senator is not the same as fighting for the poor in the middle class i will fight for the poor in the middle class every day of my life because i have so far and, every day of my and life john deaton's answer is let the big corporations come in and take it all and i guarantee massachusetts we will not be better off and that concludes our senate debate thanks to the candidates for an excellent debate thanks okay. to victoria mcgrain and the boston globe it's been a pleasure working with you and thanks also to the many talented people behind the scenes here at wbc who make these debates happen so now that you've heard the candidates you have a job to do vote early voting by mail has already begun check with your local town or city hall to find out about in-person early voting and where to vote on election day then watch your vote count on wbz's extensive election night coverage coverage of the national results starts on wbc via cbs news at 7 p.m we're here on tv 38 starting at 8 with local results including the ballot questions and all night long we're streaming on CBS News Boston. For all of us here at WBC, I'm John Kelly. Thank you for watching.